Hi, I'm Ashley from Life Beyond Locks, and today I'm talking to the stylists, the salon owners, and the wholesalers. And I'm talking to you too. If you are on the fence about alternative hair, you want to learn more, because today I'm looking at a piece from New Times Hair. This is a manufacturer. So this came directly from a manufacturer, and they supply salons, stylists, and wholesalers. So if that's you, you're looking into incorporating alternative hair into your offerings for your clients, or you already do so and you're looking for a different manufacturer this is a video you're going to want to watch but if you're one of my regular viewers who is just on the fence about all for alternative hair wanting to learn more already wearing it and just curious to know what else is out there this is also for you because this is a manufacturer that um, I can provide salons that supply these pieces for you to be in contact with so you won't be able to buy from them directly but as I said I can recommend salons where you can purchase these pieces so we're gonna take a look, start to finish, what this looks like, why it might be something you wanna include in your salon, and let's just get into it. I'm gonna cut the lace, I'm gonna do all of those things for you so that if you are new to this, you can kind of get a sense of what needs to be done before you um, really put this in the hands of your client, let them walk out your door. Now, know that I am not a stylist, I have no formal training, but I am a wig wearer, and so all of these types of things, you know, navigating alternative hair, I've had real life experience doing, and I've also helped coach other women who are entering the world of alternative hair and navigating the purchasing and the install and all of that. So let's just get into it. What they've provided me with is a 14 inch. Now you're going to see that that's measurement from the nape because it's quite long. Uh, 14 inch level four uh, double lace human hair wig. It's Chinese Remy hair. So that's what they provide you with. Um, and Remy hair means that all of the hair is is being placed in the wig in the same direction to minimize tangling. So it's a beautiful box that they provide and the shipping time was super prompt. Now I can't promise that your shipping time will be the same as my shipping time, but we're talking a couple of days. I think it was three days uh, from overseas, which is really quite amazing. And I'm in Ottawa, Canada. So it's gonna come packaged to you. I've already kind of opened it, but it comes packaged with a hairnet to keep the hair protected and then a piece of tissue paper for it to maintain its shape. Now, this particular piece that I'm gonna show you has bangs, and that's just how the manufacturer had it. Now, you would typically be ordering these pieces without bangs, and then you would be doing the styling yourself, um, which of course is ideal because then your client can have full customization. That's what they're going to want if they're coming in for alternative hair. Most times, especially if they're new to alternative hair, they want something that looks and feels like their biological hair did before they started experiencing hair loss. Um, if that's not what they ask for and they're not sure, I mean, ultimately you have a personal relationship with this person, so you're going to be able to guide them appropriately. But it's always my recommendation that you start by going with something that has the same texture, the same style, the same color. Um, and a similar density to the bio hair before hair loss, it's just going to help to ease that time of transition because wearing alternative hair is a big shock, especially when you get used to looking at yourself with very little hair in the mirror. So that's my recommendation, but of course those are conversations that you will have with your clients. So this piece, as I said, comes with bangs, but they won't necessarily come with bangs. Generally speaking, it's gonna be for you to add layers, to add bangs, curtain bangs, whatever it is that the client wants. And that's also true of the knot. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second as well. I'm just gonna give this a quick brushing um, because it does have a little bit of box hair and we're gonna look at how we can get that box hair out as well. So as I said, um, this one does not come with bleach knots. They can bleach the knots for you, but I'm gonna recommend that this be something you learn how to do on site if you don't already know how to do it from factory colored hair, just because you'll be able to control um, the intensity of that bleach, whether you wanna go lightly bleached or fully bleached or unbleached. If they're going with a bang, there's no need to bleach the hair. Um, and therefore, you know, you're, you're extending the lifetime of the wig. So that's again a conversation that you're going to want to have with your client. And that's the reason that they sell these pieces unbleached. But as I said, you can request bleaching. I just don't personally recommend it. I recommend that you do it. Um, and that way you have more control over the lifespan of the piece since, you know, this is, this is something you're selling to your client and it's about your relationship with them. But if you aren't exactly sure what the knots look like, I'm going to show you right now on my hand here. 
So basically the knot is the area where the individual strands are sewn into this lace. And you can see we've got a transparent lace here. Um, and it's that point of entry and then exit that you see these little black dots. So if you bleach the underside of the lace, you can um, remove some of that appearance, that harsh appearance. But of course, as you know, that would potentially weaken the individual strands and then could result in um, shedding over time, breaking over time. Um, but it is a necessary part of the wig if you're going to go with lace. So just bear that in mind when you get it, it's going to look like that. They've also closed off their lace here. And so you've got enough room to be able to cut to your client's desired length, or if you're purchasing this for yourself from a salon, to the desired length that you'd like. And it's always recommended that you go about a quarter of an inch so that there's room left for when that lace starts to fray that you can cut further. But it's ultimately your choice as the wearer or as the client's choice um, about how short they want to go. So for me personally, there are times where I will cut right into, this is an ear tab, so I'll cut like into the hair that's on the ear tab, knowing full well that it's going to shed further just because, or fray further, just because I want it to be able to blend really nicely with my biological hair. So again, it comes down to personal preference. If your client has worn a wig before, then um, they'll probably know what they like. And if they haven't, you'll be able to have those conversations with them. So as I said, we've got uh, we've got double lace in some of the areas here and then single area, a single layer of lace in this T part along the temples and then ear tab to ear tab we have lace. The rest of the wig is constructed with wefting as you can see there so it's nice and stretchy, uh, roomy. We've got adjuster tabs that are the bra strap type adjuster tabs and we've got clips on the ear tab. I would also, um, if you're having conversations with your client, uh, recommend the potential of adding a comb back here to grip. For those who have a really flat head, they might say that they're not an ideal candidate for a wig because I have a very flat back of my head, but the comb will allow me to dig into either my bun or the back of my wig grip. And so that's something that you might want to consider adding for your client as well. Okay, so we've got this beautiful reddish color level four, um, and I'm a medium brown ashy kind of biological hair color so you can kind of get a comparison there of how it's going to look it really does run a little bit more on the reddish side which is pretty typical um, when you're ordering pieces directly from vendors so just for contrast I'll put it right next to my ashy hair so that you can really see the color there okay so in terms of the density I'm not sure what the density on this piece is but it really feels like a good amount of hair. It's not too much, it's not too little, and different companies have different rating systems, but I would call this probably about 130% density would be based on my own experience. But again, I'm not entirely sure. So that's one thing that I will, that's one thing that I will have to ask the manufacturer. Sorry, I thought that was my flat iron. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do together is we're gonna cut this lace so i'm going to move the piece back so you can fully see it and a couple things so once you're sure that your client's going to take the piece you're not gonna well they may choose to cut it themselves the lace um, but they may want you to cut it and so the first thing you're going to do is make sure that you take the hair all the way back off of the lace so you can focus on cutting the lace and not the hair itself so um, velcro works really nicely but of course you can use pretty much anything to clip that hair back. I only brought two pieces of velcro with me, so I'm gonna to need to get something else as well. Whoops. Okay, and then my recommendation is for cutting the lace that you cut starting, now you can cut from side to side and you're going to do this on your client's head most likely if you're cutting it for them which means you can really kind of customize it to the shape of their head um, but since I'm doing it on a mannequin I'm going to start in the middle I could start on one side and work my way across but I'm just going to start in the middle and go to about a quarter of an inch and then cut down the sides 
Now again, I don't have to worry too much because this piece has bangs, so you're never gonna see the lace anyway. But if, if the person wanted to have a piece without bangs, then that's something you really have to consider. Now there are different theories as well about the best approach for cutting lace, by the way, beyond just the quarter of an inch sort of recommendation. And that is like, do you go in a zigzag pattern? Do you go straight? Uh, some people recommend pinking shears to have more of an uneven sort of cut to make that lace even less obvious because otherwise you might see a straight line depending. Here, I'll show you it's more obvious if I get close up. So you can kind of see a straight line there. So that might be more obvious if there's a difference between the color of the lace and then your client's skin tone or your own skin tone. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure um, that you cut accordingly, like whatever is sort of the need of your client or of yourself, if you're doing it on yourself, it's going to change the way you decide to cut it, whether you go zigzag or whether you leave more room or have less room or whatever it is that you wanna do. Okay. So I'm gonna put the piece on now and show you how I would style it out of the box. By the way, this is a small cap that I requested. Now I will say um, these, these size a little bit big. Um, if this is a small, uh, my circumference is 21.25 inches and I just have a lot of extra room. This fits over my ear. so. This is going to be something that I would like their small, I would say is ideal for a medium circumference rather than for someone who has a, uh, a true small. You're not going to be able to get them to fit very well into the small cap. There's gonna be some extra room. So you might wanna go extra small in that case. Okay, so out of the box, it looks pretty cute. It's definitely wearable. Um, I'm not gonna go crazy. So you can see here, I would cut personally, I would cut right along into that ear tab so that you don't see this lace at all. But some people might want to leave it longer, in which case they're going to, when they go style, have to leave a couple of pieces out to conceal that. Um, so out of the box, she looks pretty good and you could wear her this way. I guarantee you adding curls would give it some nice shape, but um, for you and your client, you might discuss adding some layering. Uh, face framing pieces would just be gorgeous. So that's a conversation that you're going to want to have with your client, but to make it just look nice and smooth and not have any box hair, I'm going to flat iron it. All right, so I'm just going to do a quick job around the face. Now, I also haven't washed this piece, and I'm definitely going to recommend that if you're purchasing this for sale, that you wash it and then style it with your client because the texture here is really straight and smooth, but it is most like it is most likely that after it's washed, it's going to change texture slightly and end up with some waves. So you really want to help your client to understand that it may not look like this right out of the wash. And just like with their own biological hair, it's going to take a little bit of effort to style it and get it to look super sleek again or with loose waves, however it is that they most want to wear this hair. Okay, so these bangs are a little bit long or a little bit long for me. So I'll just kind of tuck them behind my ear. I think what I'm going to do is actually go in and cut them so that I have like a total fringe because they're not quite long enough right now for me to be a curtain bang, but they're just kind of getting in my eyes. So I'm gonna have to cut them and I'm not gonna do that on camera because as I said before, I have absolutely no stylist training. It's just going to be embarrassing, but I will uh, do that off camera. Um, it definitely shouldn't be a tutorial for anybody though. So beautiful, sleek strands. As I said, these are probably going to dry wavy. So make sure that you, you know, play around with it a little bit and that you have an opportunity to um, show your clients how they can work this piece. Definitely consider giving them some layers and a few more things that you can do to make this look more natural. So there is the bleaching of the knots. Of course, you can work with the color as well. But another thing that you might want to consider doing with your client is plucking the hairline a little bit further. They've done a really good job of making it nice and dense so you can play around, but you may want to go in and pluck individual hairs. The other thing that you can do to really customize this is to take a um, 
light powder, almost like a face powder, and use that right on the part line. So if they're going for a center part, if they're going for a side part or the other side, it doesn't really matter, but go ahead and using a nice dense makeup brush, apply some eyeshadow on the, or sometimes I use eyeshadow, but apply some of that powder on the underside and then a little bit right in where that part line is. And it will definitely help to lighten the whole thing. It will help to conceal some of the knots and it will definitely make it appear more realistic all over. So that's another little tip, little trick to helping your client feel like their best self in this piece. So um, again, New Times Hair, this is like a really interesting opportunity because it's directly from the manufacturer, which means that you know they have lots of different systems that you can acquire. Um, it's not limited just to these lace wigs. They also do extensions, they do hair toppers, they have men's systems as well. So regardless of your client's needs, there should be something there that you can find for them um, and bring into your offerings into your rotation. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer. And of course, I may end up relying on the team from uh, New Times Hair to help me answer those questions, but very happy to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have an excellent day and I'll see you with the next video.